Welcome back, friends. And before we get started, I have some coaching announcements. Now, we are going to be launching a 10-week podcast contest. That means that we're going to be giving out prizes every Friday for those who are putting in reviews and five stars and sharing. Now, make sure that you screenshot and you share with me on social media. Next thing, if you're local to Ottawa Hall, I have bike mechanical bike maintenance clinics that you're going to want to check out, learn how to patch a tire, change a flat, and then I have learned to group ride clinics. So if you're new to cycling and you're worried about how, how to bike with others and bike safely, this is a clinic for you. And then I have my online cycling skills program. The first one is a four hour cycling skills intensive. The next one is four weeks where you work one on one with me. The third one is a four video module download that you can work at your own pace. You can get all the details on my website, sylviedow.ca. Welcome back everybody to Secrets from the Saddle podcast with your host, Sylvie Dow. And I have a super special person to, sh- to introduce to you today as my guest. His name is Sylvie, uh, Sylvie, Sylvie, Sylvain Richard, and I know Sylvain, I don't even know how many years I've known him. I've been cycling racing since 2005, but I don't think we came in contact till maybe about five years after that. So Sylvain has a super cool story because he is an international timer of events. So if you know anything about events, somebody is always at the finish line doing all the timing, the the race pictures, you know those those photo finishes? Well, this is part of Sylvain's job. Um, and those things are super important for naming the winners, right? Um, now, that's and that's how Sylvain started. He started about not age nine doing timing in hockey, and it has taken him to some serious um, international races. And I'm so excited to bring Sylvain here to share with you how he got from timing hockey to hit owning his own timing business and making it to some pretty high level events and I'm going to sh- I'm going to let Sylvain talk to you and share with you all of those raw details. So Sylvain, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you Sylvie for the introduction and uh, yeah, Sylvain is a little bit hard to pronounce in English. Uh, yeah. often, but, and I, I'm glad because you did not call me Sylvian because a well, lot of people <laughs> around the world call me Sylvian. They just reverse the A and the high and just like Sylvian, so it's an habit. And of oh course- Oh my God, it's better than Sophie. That's what yes, I get. Yes, of course. I'm of like- course. And no. what doesn't help is both of my name or can, can be a first name in French. So mm-hmm. Richard, and my name, com- my, my company uh, is called Richard Sports Services. So a lot of people also call me Richard. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, that's funny. I can see that because usually a lot of people use their either first name or last name and can't tell the difference. but tell us how you got started i like you uh now i'm gonna call you richard now Sylvain was just sharing that with me so <laughs> so i'm so i and i i didn't get all the details so i'm really curious to hear how everything moved from being a nine-year-old timer um and here's a little thing he wanted to get to the olympics but he did it a little untraditionally so let's hear Let's hear yeah, it. So, like I said to a lot of kids or people uh, when I do uh, some uh, conference, it's all start by passion, mm-hmm. the passion of sports. And then it's, it's uh, developed with a passion of sports, traveling, and a little bit of informatics also. So, uh, and I, I was in the years where informatics uh, was at their not beginning, but uh, it was growing a little bit fast because of the introduction of internet and all that stuff. So mm. uh, it, it, it was great to play with all these uh, stuff, toys and, uh, and everything. So at the age of nine, I was al- already playing hockey and uh, I want to earn a little bit of money. And uh, I was always uh, looking for, okay, how, how works the clocks and uh, all these stuff. And so I became a timekeeper 
And I had the, the, the chance to work in many, many levels up to the uh, Quebec Junior Major Hockey League. So that was a very, wow. uh, very nice experience with the Huskies of Rouen Noranda, uh, my hometown, located in ABTB. And uh, so, yeah, that was great. And uh, on the side, as I was doing cycling since 2014, but my uncle uh, passed that near to uh, very close to uh, win the Tour of Labitsby in 1984. Wow. So I had always the, 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 the cycling uh, story in the family and I was, uh, uh, okay, looking, oh, so that, that could be great to start. And my uncle opened a bicycle store. So ah. I started to, to bicycle. How convenient so, is that? Yeah, and then <laughs> also, why not? I have the Tour of Labitsby at home, so it's a very good objective and everything. And, but meanwhile, when I was a cyclist, like I was uh, playing in hockey, I was always looking, oh, what's that big camera? Because we had this camera, but th that camera, the one I was looking with Sylvain Lavoie operating it, it was the old 1976 camera from the uh, Montreal Olympic Games with a <laughs> real pellicular to develop. And at, after that, oh, you need God, a 10x no magnifier to read the cyclists. Oh, so that was really old, but it was doing the results and I was really impressed and uh, uh, everything with that. So I always keep an interest of it. And, uh, and then uh, when uh, I start to work with the FQSC uh, as a student uh, inter internship, uh, we bought our first timing camera. So, uh, and it was the electronic one after that. So it was easier to operate and learn. So. Combined with my works at the uh, Bromont National C Cycling Center, uh, we had also an electronic timing system over there. So it, it, it grew my passion about timing. Oh, and I said, cool. oh, that's, that's interesting uh, because uh, it, it can give me a way to uh, upgrade and to steps in more uh, upper level and uh, get more experience and everything. So did you use it? Um, so were you, this is funny because like, my last uh, guest, we are talking about the Bromont training, the the international, uh, the national training center, and uh, apparently uh, start for a lot of people. But were you, so you were into racing as a young athlete of fourteen years old, and so where did that take you? Because you you mentioned that you know because Turabitabi is one of the UCI races. It's one of the biggest international race um i have not been there myself but uh lucky you you get to train on the course so where did that take you like you decided to get into racing and you were still timing on the side like how or did you use that as a so, job yeah when i started in uh, 2014 to uh, to do cycling i was really fully uh, racing and uh, during the winter i I had a choice to make because we have not so much money to do hockey and cycling. Mm -hmm. So I decided to switch to cycling. But meanwhile, to, to keep the training during the winter, I, I did uh, cross-country skiing. Uh, so it, it helped. And uh, we have very good uh, facility at home. So uh, that was really great for that. But in the years, I, I still continue to do hockey timekeeping to earn a little bit of money. And mm -hmm. then also I switched to be a, a volleyball referee. So I, oh. I've been volleyball referee up, up to the national level. Uh, so that helped me to earn a lot of money. And, you know, all this stuff that I'm explaining that, okay, I did that. I did the uh, volleyball, hockey, cycling and everything. You know, it, 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 it's like for me, it wasn't not an objective, but uh, and uh, I realized it after. But it's like for me to put some seedlings in the soil everywhere to mm -hmm. grow the plants of people get know me in uh, in the the, the, the well of the uh, of the sport yeah so sure. that that helped me when i arrived at the university also as i i, I was uh, already known by a lot of uh, federations the staffs and uh, it's a small world uh, mm -hmm. uh, people are uh, talking all together so that so i did that cycling and uh, I, my best results was was third at the quebec provincial uh, time trial championship uh, when i was cadet and uh, I did also a 15 position at the National Road Championship. That was lucky in my hometown in Wainanada. 
So that was great. <laughs> but I knew that I was not going to be a very uh, elite cyclist and very good and all that stuff. So that's why all my, my seeds I plant everywhere. Uh -huh. Like, oh, I could get uh, very nice flowers. And then, oh, I, I've been known. And I, I knew that, okay, I can go to my dream. My dream was to go to the Olympics. So let's find another way, uh, uh, not being uh, an athlete, to go there. So I took all the courses. I become a national commissaire. I, 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 I am a level three, NCCP level three in coach. Uh, I, I went to the un University of Sherbrooke in kinesiology. Uh, yeah. So I did a lot of stuff to, to see around the, the, the globe of sports. Okay, where I can find my path to go to the Olympics. Oh, I love it. And for those who are listening, who are younger, and these are really, really important things that Sylvain is mentioning, planting the seeds, getting yourself experience. And um, I absolutely love this because I've kind of done that with my, my oldest daughter. My kids are too young to work right now, but the thing is that with my daughter, you know, I pushed her to get experience in working younger and then into coaching for, for downhill skiing. And then she did some coaching with uh, gymnastics. And now she just has like that passion and knowledge to be able to work with people. And I think that's so important, but you're, you're, it's different because you had a goal. You had a goal to get to the Olympics. I remember there's many, like you said, there's many ways to get to the Olympics, not as an athlete, you know what I mean? And yeah. um, because there's organizer committees, there's, like you said, there's timers, there's coaches, there's athletes. Um, and I'm sure there's lots of other things that you could set yourself up to get there. And I love that because you saw that as an opportunity to plant all these seeds, not only to get there, but as opportunities for business and people to get to know you. Because wait till you guys hear the rest of his story. Um, and so continue on because now the FQSC is the Quebec uh, Federation Quebec Sports Cyclist here in Quebec. So that's the, the cycling federation here in Quebec, Canada. Um, and Sylvain mentioned that he started working with them. So take it from there. I think that's where you left off. You're setting yeah, all those I seeds. Say, yeah. I would say, yeah. The, so uh, after uh, one year of uh, work uh, between uh, my, 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 the, 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 the time I left Abitsby to start university, uh, that summer I worked uh, at the Bromont National Cycling Center mm -hmm. uh, just before I start uh, uh, Sherbrooke University. But in Sherbrooke University, uh, the kinesiology program is an uh, alternance of, uh, I don't know if that, that's a good word, but it's uh, between works and study. So oh, we do okay. one so semester of works. Exactly. So yeah. it's one semester of works, one semester of study, and it's oh, alternate cool. like that. So uh, I, I knew that I had, I probably had an opportunity to do it with the FQSC. So mm -hmm. I really try to speak a lot uh, with them, with Pierre Thibault, uh, the head uh, director at that time, and with Arbeau to try to convince them to uh, mm -hmm. have me because there was nobody. Uh, at, at that time, uh, FQSC was like only four people. Oh, and wow. now they are, uh, they are around uh, 14 staff uh, since yeah. 2000. So it grew a lot. Mm -hmm. But it, I, I had that chance. They, they accept to give me an internship. But the, the condition was to do it with uh, two semesters in a row, which it was not supposed with our university. But right. I succeed to get a derogation and uh, <laughs> we did it. And uh, after that, uh, the FQSC was ready to give me a uh, full-time job. But I said, hey, I have to finish my degree. So right. finally, I finished my degree uh, part-time and I did it. So, cool. yeah. So I spent... Uh, uh, seven years with the FQSC, seven wonderful years. Uh, I had that, the chance also to uh, have on my files the paracycling. Uh, okay. And I, I, I was with, I would say, the chief of the world in paracycling at that time. Louis Barbeau was mm -hmm. president of the committee, was member of a lot of international committee. And in the late uh, 2000s, 
the paracycline has been merged with the UCI. Oh, yes, and, yeah. And having the chance to be a co-worker with Rue Barbeau, uh, I, uh, in 2009, he invited me uh, at the UCI. They had so many problems with their results uh, oh. over there. So he invited yeah. me to uh, one of the, uh, the, the world championship over there and said, okay, I want you to help them, to explain them how to work. Uh, and it, 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 it's another seed that it grow. And now it's a very, very nice uh, flower for me. And it, it gives me so much opportunity. So that's a key point of my story. It's right. really the, 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 the development of the paracycling uh, timing. But otherwise, on the side, I did a lot of uh, timing uh, yeah. with the FQSC also. So at that point also, being timekeeper in our provincial races, regional races, national events, I would call it a jungle timing. <laughs> when I, when I, I say that jungle timing, it's I want to <laughs> Can't wait. do, yeah, because I want to do the comparison with the pilots. You know, the best pilots, airplane pilots in the world are the one who get the experience with smaller planes, with having so much trouble and so much problem. So they, they, they quick react to solve the problem. Right. So having that chance to work with these jungle timing events, like you arrive, there is no power, there is no uh, setup, uh, there's no tent, uh, all that stuff. So I learned so much how to react quickly because the goal of my job is to give everyone a results and a real results. I don't want to say, ah, oh, yeah, you're, you're tied. And uh, uh, because of technology, I cannot uh, oh, uh, divide gosh. you, break the tie. It <laughs> happened to me. It happened some time, but I will say it was a real time. It was right. really, uh, yeah, even at 5,000 screen per second, uh, image per second on the technology, they were tied. So, but yeah. I don't want to say that because of out of technology or anything. So I, I learned rapidly how to solve these problems and it yeah. helped me in all my jobs since that. Well, if you've ever organized a team or gone to a race and you're always wondering where the results come from and, or you want to dispute a result, <laughs> Sylvain is the one you go to, right? <laughs> Yeah, we're not, we're not allowed to, to do that professionally in Canada, uh, but the ones uh, we know and I know uh, are very good. Mm -hmm. you, you, are, you really need very good arguments if you want to protest uh, results. Oh, I know. Uh, depend on the technology used. Uh, chip timing is not as magical as people can think. Okay, uh, because we, we got so many questions in Quebec. We have chose not to use the chip timing. Okay. Uh, where we, because the rules say we need photo finish uh, right. to, to add the official results. So the, 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 the chip timing will help to count the number of laps. Yes. But you really need a photo finish to break tie everybody and to classify yeah. everybody. So uh, that's, uh, so, so the, uh, Normally, the only argument that I re really accept and I will make the effort to look is when somebody said, yeah, I got lapped or I was not lapped and uh, the commissaire applied uh, one lap more on the time of the athlete or something like that. Yeah. That's because very often like, yeah, I'm in front of that rider. Yeah, but look, I have, a, I have the photo. <laughs> yeah. I have a proof. You're uh, you're you're really uh, behind the athlete. But finally, after the we explain a little bit the story. Yeah, he was in front, one kilometer to go to the race. <laughs> he had been oh. beaten at the sprint. <laughs> so sometimes you do not realize that. So. <laughs> the best one is when you still have one lap and you sprint for the finish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a famous story in the Tour of La BTB. It's oh, we gosh. call it. We call it making a gros low uh, because <laughs> one, my uncle in 1984, he sprint one lap before at Tour of oh. He won that sprint, but it was one lap to go. They start oh. to ring the bell. And with the bonification, he was about to win the Tour of Labitsby. And oh. Oh. now all the Finnish racers in Labitsby, 
are on a crit race. So you uh, you do your, your, your race, it's a point A to point B race, and then you do yeah. like five laps uh, on the circuit. Oh, wow. Most of the time, the athlete uh, on the circuit will count, will not count the, 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 the first lap. And then they arrive wow. in the sprint and they hear the bell. So almost every, every year at the first race, we have an athlete who raises his hand, yeah, I win. And, Finally, no. And everybody goes no by him. <laughs> oh, that's the, I've seen that happen. And we're like, no, keep going. You're not done. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Well, but as like um, a, a racer myself and a team manager, you know, it's always like, are all the results ready? Are the results ready? When yeah. are you going to get the results? And poor Sylvain. Uh, yes, they're almost ready. And it's, and it's usually like you can't bring them out because there is a dispute of some sort and everything has to be sorted out and then revised and then the commissaire has to approve it and then it goes up on the, on the wall. On but, the wall, uh, but now also it's now, um, yeah, now it's, it's on all, the internet. And, uh, yes. But also there's a way that now with the life timing, it, it go very quick. Uh, and yeah. now I, I have the capacity on my system that as soon as I, it enter to approve the number it goes on the internet so uh, it's very fast but after that you, uh, you have to make sure that they are in the proper uh, lab yeah. in the same lab uh, all that stuff so that's that's why it's created a delay of uh, publish the official results wow. uh, and especially that in canada we want to maximize uh, the races so we have, we have multiple categories on course uh, with mm -hmm. not the same distance and yeah. all these stuff that we have to manage to make the, the, the results uh, uh, correct. Yeah. So that's created a delay. But uh, normally when, uh, when we are only one category, one race, uh, no laps, uh, it's, it's instant. As soon as I hit enter, poof, the results is on the web. So it's very, very uh, fast now. And uh, the, the, these technology is growing so fast. And it, yeah. it's nice because now with that COVID team, uh, we had the chance to host uh, competitions uh, last uh, summer in uh, in Quebec. Yes, and, uh, talk to you about it because I know that that so, they were able to get some going. Yeah, exactly. And uh, at the beginning, we were only allowed to do time trial. Uh, so with the live timing, uh, we uh, people were able to get their time as soon as they finished. They were able wow. to get it on a phone because we don't did not want the people to mess and go uh, right. in front of a paper and uh, yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. To, to forget about the social, social uh, distancing. And, uh, and that way also, they got their results rapidly. They were able to get it on their phone or computer. So wow. they did their so, event and whoop, fly out uh, from, the, uh, from the race uh, to- uh, So Sylvain, what's that life cycle? What, do you, what is that? Is that a new program you're working on? Where? No, no, no. It's, uh, it's just a web page uh, okay. that I, I publish the results on it. And uh, also my other colleague uh, do it uh, with uh, their company also. Uh, uh, for example, Doug Pogue from Race Timing is also doing a, a live results, especially also for track which is right. most important because right. with this technology now, and I have the chance to work with Doug as we became the first country and the first events, and he is the first company because he did the, the programmation, but we are running a, a full track cycling competition paperless. <gasps> wow. Yes, yes. So there is no paper needed to, to be printed uh, up to the national level. It's a little bit different at the international level, but uh, if we compare a regular World Cup or World Championship with the Paracycling Worlds that we host uh, last year, uh, we pro probably print no more than 5% of the sheets that it's re re normally printed in oh the uh, Elite wow. uh, Championship. That's amazing because I remember like as a, you know, as a commissaire, um, you know, you're just dealing with so many pages like, uh, which ones are the uh, most yeah. current? Um, I don't you know, like, holy crap. But let's go back to the time where you were working with the FQSC and you yeah. made the decision to break out and start your own business. Now you're just yeah, like, because exactly. I remember, I'm like, hey, where's Sylvain? He's like, oh, he started his own business. And you're like, yeah. what? And then you came back and you're, because they used to, um, 
a contract out to somebody else or you, and then you started working with them again. So how'd that work? Yeah. So let's say, uh, and let's remember my goal is to go to the Olympics. That's right. Uh, so uh, I have a chance. <laughs> I to, can't do small, uh, and, small town anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's a, uh, I, I would say an important part of the story that uh, we probably missed a little bit is yeah, in yeah. 2003. Oh, Hamilton. Okay. Hamilton. Hamilton? Yeah. We host the Road Worlds in Hamilton. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and uh, Pierre Utsobo was the general uh, manager for the cycling part. Right. And uh, they had, like, a few months before the event, they had trouble uh, with the organizing committee, with one, one staff. And uh, so they called me at the last minute to, okay, do you want to be <laughs> responsible of commissaires, anti-doping, and timing uh, <laughs> files. At the like, really? Yeah. Like all of them? Yeah. So, but <laughs> like, uh, uh, the, the, the main part was, uh, was the timing uh, mm -hmm. to prepare all the equipment, the site, and uh, the, the, everything. Commissaires and uh, anti-doping was just uh, like doing some liaison and uh, just information points uh, to make sure that uh, everybody get the contact and uh, information and everything so it, but it, it, it was a very nice experience and why I put a little bit of emphasis on that is is the place I had the chance to meet the people doing the international timing with Swiss timing Tissot Ooh. timing at that time uh, yeah. Tissot is a sponsor but there's a company under it it's called Swiss timing and I met one of their chief over there mm -hmm. so I kept in touch with them and I said, hey, guys, I uh, would be into interested to go uh, to, to do some international timing with you and everything. So it's fun because it's entering in one here. It did not uh, left the other here. It stayed <laughs> in the brain of the guy. Ooh, so yes. so uh, in 2006, I uh, recontact them to just, oh, let's say, oh, or, uh, do you need staff for uh, Torino Olympics? Uh, I want to go to the Olympics. So I just... I know they are the company, so mm -hmm. I, I contact them and said, ah, unfortunately, the, the, the teams are full because they are full also one year before the games. Mm -hmm. But, but you're we like, had the Kamoans games in 2006 in Melbourne. So do you want to go in Melbourne, uh, in Australia, for uh, doing uh, timing in track cycling, so road okay. cycling, and mountain bike? I said, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> yeah. So my first international project with them. And uh, so it, it, it grew up a little bit. They were really yeah. happy about my job. And now that bring us to 2008, mm -hmm. Beijing Olympics. I was employed by the FQSC. But 2008 was an important year also for Louis Barbeau. He was doing oh. the TV uh, commentator with Radio Canada uh, for the Olympics. And at the Paralympics, uh, he was the chief of the Canadian mission. So oh. Louis was probably out for uh, almost two months from the FQSC doing these, uh, these stuff in China. So he needed me to, to stay in Montreal to, uh, to keep the fort and uh, to uh, make sure that uh, all the activities from the FQSC will, will run properly and uh, have uh, people to answer the phone and all that stuff. So I wow. had to refuse to go to China because I've been invited by uh, Swiss Timing to go to, to my first Olympic and said, yeah, unfortunately I can't. So <laughs> I have to stay. Oh, so serious? I was disappointed. Yeah. But yeah. I understand the reason and I knew it was not going to be my uh, last uh, opportunity to go. Uh, and uh, finally in 2009, Swiss Timing invited me to go to uh, Vancouver Olympic Games. So I, did I went winter, to those. Yeah. So Winter Olympic Games and I did curling oh. because the, there's not a lot of staff who want to work at the cur curling. Uh, okay. It's funny. There, yes, How there's do you timing. time curling? Yeah, there's timing. But also my job is not only timing. It's all about the uh, technology around the sports. All right. the results, transmission, uh, TV graphics. Uh, th there's a really big world. Huh? Because, for example, during the uh, Summer Olympics, there's 600 staffs doing, uh, I would say, timing and scoring for the uh, Summer Olympics. So there's a lot of staff. So, yeah. So 
And, but it's a long days in, in curling and uh, there's not a lot of staff who want to do it because also it's <laughs> curling. I, personally, it. I love, yeah, I love curling, but we enter the facility at 7 a.m. and we finish uh, most of the time at 9.30 or 10 p.m. And it's like that from the beginning of the game up to the end of the game. So there's no stop. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, not, it's well paid, but it's not so easy. And uh, well, also not so easy. <laughs> During the games, we are just monitoring the system. So it's, uh, oh, okay. it, it, we, so I can very look very, very good games. <laughs> so, because yeah, yeah. I, I played a little bit curling as I, I know that's the sport. So it helped me to appreciate it. Wow. So that's, that's unbelievable. 2010. Yeah, in two, keep going. So in 2009, I start my company. Richard Sports Services, mm -hmm. and I, because I was at a point that I, I took all my vacation to do uh, timings, and I had also to work with the FQSC, so I decided to leave the FQSC uh, and uh, put all the emphasis on timing, and uh, I never regret my choice. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> like, I knew that you, you made that step to move forward, because, like... You know, I'd see you during the summer and then I see you on social media. You're, you're here and you're there and you got married and you had kids and all that stuff. And, but okay. So 2009 now, when did you, so 2009, you made it to the Olympics. Now, what have you been doing since now that now, like you're like an international timer, you know, yeah, <laughs> provincial <say> <laughs> stuff is like easy <laughs> that, no it's not easy because uh you have challenges in every level i know. You remember uh, my jungle timing so yeah. you it, it's, you have some, some you're like what uh, am i gonna challenge. need for this race and, <laughs> Just... and you know it, it, it's uh, also a race commissaire could tell you the same as sometime it's more difficult to work at the lower level than mm. at the upper level because I there's that. so um, uh, exam for for example at the lower level you will have all these trouble with uh, surrounding like the power tent and all that stuff. But when you arrive at an elite event, though, let's say an example Tour de France, which is could be one of my other goals, but uh, for now uh, uh, I will, it's a dream. But mm -hmm. at Tour de France, at Tour de France, you arrive on site. There's trucks that they just put the, 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 the scaffold uh, automatically, uh, everything is already connected, and then boom, everything's there. It's easy. You uh, just have to sit in the chair and go. Yeah, exact, <laughs> exact. It's the same for uh, commissaires, and uh, you, you follow the race because there's a TD and uh, all that stuff. So it's in many, many ways, it's easier at the upper level than the lower level. And, I can see that. And that's also in Parasycling. Uh, all my jungle timing story, and experience helps so much because paracycling it's a very a really world class level now and it's growing and growing years after years but there is not a lot of money like in the elite uh, cycling for for the, the valley athletes uh, so they want to have the technology and all the stuff like if they were an elite racers but there's with lack of money so sometimes right. there is a not the, the not the same level of the timekeepers and uh, all that stuff because my go, my job with the UCI at the Paracycling is uh, they call me the timing expert. That's my title with them, and uh, my job well, is yeah. to th there's a local timekeeper that is hired, local or national for the event, and I am uh, the, the the key in between the time the timekeepers, the commissaires, the federation. I'm like the, the, the center of the star and I, I have to speak and uh, get uh, the, the data and uh, the informations and to rely on each uh, ends of the star and it's all central on, on me and then I, I compile and I publish the official results when I get all the informations uh, and I, I, with all the experience and knowledge I have with the multiple brands of timing uh, that helped me also to solve some problems sometimes they they could not face. Uh, another example, we in Canada, we, when we do bicycle race, we have multiple classes, multiple oh, uh, categories on, on, on course. Mm -hmm. But when you arrive in biggest country, like in Europe, 
normally they have so much athletes, they will run with like just a junior race or an elite race and not multiple category on the course at the same time. Mm -hmm. But at, in paracycling, we have up to six categories yeah. in two races on course all at the same time. So you have mm -hmm. to publish this, these uh, six res uh, results as fast as possible. Everybody yeah. uh, want their, their, their results uh, rapidly. So uh, that way, my experience, I was able to share it with the local timekeeper that normally they are habits to work with only one group. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it grows and it, it helped me also to make very good relationships with the other timing companies around the world. Wow. Now, now I, got, I became a commissaire and now you're topping, because I know that we, you don't use timer chips and you rely a lot on the camera and also commissaire is writing down the numbers of the finishers that come through. Now, that was always like one of the things for me as a commissaire, like my eyes could not work fast enough, nor could my mm -hmm. hands work faster to write down the numbers in the orders of the, of the, the athletes that came over the finish line. How do you still deal with that? In fact, is uh, you know, <laughs> like, you, so it, it's impossible. <laughs> Frankly, it's impossible to take all the numbers first. Yeah. Okay, that's impossible. So what's nice with the photo finish? Mm -hmm. It's record a photo of the the group of the of the peloton or, or everybody who finished. Yeah. But a race is dynamic, so it's moving. Yes. Groups are moving mm -hmm. and everything. But the key is always about the commissaire's position where they are, because it's not only from the commissaires at the table that you will be able to, uh, to make the story of a race. It's right. really, and it, it's one of the reasons why we call it also the Collège des Commissaires, because it's a team. <laughs> oh, I know. Each commissaire, if they work alone, it's impossible to have a race, mm -hmm. it's impossible to have uh, yeah. results. So each have their responsibility. For example, on a, on a race course, the, the commissaires in front of the race will ma manage the uh, breakaway. But also yes. his, his goal is to write all the number he will pass. That will yeah. mean the rider is one lap down. Yeah. So with that information, I am able to uh, put riders one lap down because that's another difficulty. Mm -hmm. At the level, uh, the, the entering level, re regional, provincial, uh, we want to give the opportunity to the riders to do as much laps, laps they can. Yeah. And we want to give them a result. When you're lapped, sorry, it's finished. You're DNF. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Out. Bang. So, yeah, you're out. so it's, it's easier for us because when we see somebody on the photo finish, he is not lapped. That's his real result. But yeah. at the provincial level, we want to give everybody a result. So, okay, he finished. But I don't know if he uh, is lapped or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's why all the uh, the information is coming from the commissaires, and or for for the for the ones who choose to uh, to use also chip timing, the, the information will come electronically with chips. Right. So it's uh, so it, it's two thinking of way uh, way of thinking, and but both both can really work if everybody do their proper job. That's right. It's like a redundancy. Like you, you've got all yeah. these different levels and different places. That's why as a, a commissaire or race official, and if you've ever been racing, there's usually a team of four and more, depending on the size of the race um, or the event. And I just decided that I'm not one of those people who is going to write. I will either be at the front of the race in the car or at the back of the race in the car, taking down all the numbers because, yeah. you know, you really have to decide where your your strengths are. And I'm telling you, oh my gosh. But also that, you, that introduced wasn't one of them. Me, you introduced me to a very important point that uh, this podcast is to uh, to the cycling community. It's yeah. about, yeah. about the positioning of your numbers. <gasps> oh, I was, go, I was just going to think, of, I was just thinking about that because... Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you doesn't have if you don't have the chips, we need to see your number, mm -hmm. and also what's help in the car. And that's why we ask and the, the, the people not to cut their frame number 
the easiest number to see from a car is the frame number. Right. So if you cut it uh, and you remove all the white on it, it's, it's harder for the commissaire to spot the, the number and take it take in, in the notes. And also us in the photo finish, the frame number, some, sometime with the angle of the camera, we, uh, we will, that give us a third chance to see the number of the athletes if it's eyed by another athlete, uh, side to side, all that stuff. But also the, the, there's multiple way to put the numbers uh, on the, the jersey. Uh, there's the UCI yeah. way where the, the two numbers are on the pocket. But mm -hmm. if you are in a race that it's UCI way, make sure your two numbers do not touch together. Let's put two fingers in between. Uh, and then <laughs> this, these two fingers just put some spacing and put the numbers a little bit sideways yeah. and give us an, a better opportunity for the commissaires and for the camera to read it. Yeah, that is really a good point because um, sometimes you can be DNF because of your numbers. And um, a lot of people, sometimes, you know, when your numbers are on your bike, they decide to cut around. I don't know. It's not going to make you any more, any faster, right? <laughs> right, right, exactly. But, and the thing is that, you know, there is always um, a reference guide as to how you're supposed to put your numbers on when you're racing for that very reason. So at the finish, people can see your numbers and even your friends when you go by. So yeah, that's a really good point because I thought about it for a second because one of those things, like when you're trying, the commissaires are trying to write down your numbers and it's kind of like sideways or underneath your armpit, you're not, nobody's going to see it. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, these are all really good points. And so, so now, like, um, so you made it through COVID. Yeah. We're just going to, because I know that you've been busy and like you know crazy travel like wow some of the places that you've been uh maybe you can name off a few but do you have do you already kind of know where you're going this summer like with uh, regards to maybe is anything confirmed? in the plan for now uh, mm -hmm. let's we will see if it's going to happen but uh on confirm i might go to egypt in april for the junior worlds, junior track worlds. Oh, wow. Oh, junior uh, track worlds. Yeah, junior track worlds. And then also, if we have a World Cup in paracycling and World Championship, I would probably go to Belgium, Italy, and Portugal during the next year. So you didn't uh, get to bring your family with you? Nah, I don't have time, unfortunately. I know. Because well, that, they can just travel there, with you and then see you later. There's too much worse <laughs> over there. But um, yeah, that, that's a funny thing. You, uh, you said I went, I traveled to a lot of uh, countries and uh, last year I was, just before the, uh, the, the pandemic to start, I was oh, yeah, about I to go to Russia in yeah. Moscow for the uh, Red Bull Crash Ties uh, finals. Oh, so oh I had really? To, yeah, I had to oh, apply for cool. the, uh, the Russian visa. And one of the questions on the Russian visa application form is, oh, please name all the countries you visit in the last 10 years. Oh, it's like, Jesus. Like, uh, there's not enough space on this. <laughs> yeah, there was not enough space. Uh, I have 29 countries I visit during the last 10 years. So uh, I, I, keep, I keep a log of my traveling because of that. Uh, in some countries, when you do the visa application, you have have to fill this kind of information to get the visa. Uh, oh, yeah. what, we're, <laughs> we're, what we are lucky is when you go to the major games, Olympic Games, uh, Commonwealth Games, uh, Pan Ams, the credential is your visa. So oh, it nice. facilitates the entry of the, uh, in the, the country. And it's, uh, it's part of the agreement that it's signed between the, uh, the IOC and uh, the, oh, okay. uh, the, the country. Like so, your passport. Uh, like your Canadian exactly. passport? Oh, cool. Exactly. But, but also the credential, we, we, because when we look at the Olympics, we see everybody with a credential except the athletes in action. But uh, the coaches, the staff, everybody, the credential is really a biometric document. Uh, it's really, uh, legally, it's like a, a passport in the country during the okay. time of the Olympics. So, oh. uh, of course, you need your real passport in case of trouble, but... Uh, to enter the country to as a valid ID and all that stuff, it's the same level and it's very very important. So it's it helped uh, when we travel and uh, 
everything. Does that but, so? Does that mean you can only be there for the Olympic Games and you cannot stay, say, for a week after, or you have to have your passport for the the, for agreement, the the agreement is up to three months after the the games. You can oh, okay. stay uh, uh, because some so that's that, that's the thing. The athletes go for that two weeks of the Olympic Games, uh, but there is more than the athletes. Uh, there's also the staff, the, 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 the delegation staff, the, the people mm -hmm. who are uh, working at the Olympics. And uh, mm -hmm. so there's a, 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 a lot of people that needs that, this extension. And of course, a lot of people stay after the games uh, to travel in well, the yeah, country to course. visit That's it and all, all, all the that whole stuff. Point. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Because 29. it's a good tourist, tourism. It's a good tourism opportunity for the country after that. Oh, of course. Of, and like, geez, why would you not want to like stick around and go It depends. Relax? It depends. I, look, an example. Uh, well, maybe not in you. 2000, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because in, in 2018, that was a crazy year. We had the Pyeongchang uh, Olympics in Korea. So Okay, so now uh, how many yeah. Olympics have you been to? I did all since 2010. So I don't, and I don't remember <laughs> how many there's a games, but I did all. So... Uh, uh, Vancouver, Sochi, uh, London, Rio, uh, uh, which one also? Pyeongchang. Uh, yeah, that's. I ah, think I so, uh, one, but, so uh, like, yeah, Olympics is kind of like, yeah, I've been to the Olympics. I don't know. I, I can't even keep count now. So, so what do you do now that you've yeah, achieved so, that? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I know I, I, I'm pri privileged. I know it's, uh, it's, uh, I, I achieved my goal multiple times, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's a, uh, it's a nice opportunity. And you know, even, even if I did not been as an athlete, it's always nice to see the eyes of people when, when you see, oh yeah, I've been to the Olympics. You see the eyes. Wow. You've been to the Olympics. It, it's, it's something. So I, I, I can a little bit understand what an athlete's goal is to also to be at the Olympics because it, it, it's it's a dream it's uh, something magical to the people oh, I telling that uh, you you've been to the Olympics and we're talking a lot of, uh, a lot of the Olympics but for me also being at the Paralympics it's uh -huh. really nice I was uh, for the to Tokyo game that has been postponed I was not supposed to go to the Olympics but only the Paralympics oh, but for okay. me it was really great it was really really great and uh, uh, so yeah, I have that chance, and uh, I know it's also a chance, privilege, to be part of the <laughs> uh, the staff from Swiss Timing, and uh, and it, it also it's it's something that I, all my the works I did, all the, the the seeds I plant everywhere, I also the chance to work with multiple timing companies. Oh, so yeah. I did not work only with Swiss Timing. I work also with Phoenix Sports Technology in USA mm -hmm. that. Uh, I had a lot of contracts with the junior track worlds and uh, uh, some other big games and uh, all these company. And so I, I had the, 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 the opportunity also to learn all the timing equipments. And oh, now, yeah. now I will say what kindly saved me during this COVID period is that I start to sell, sell the timing equipments to do services, to repair them and sell. So, uh, and I, I am involved in multiple sports. Uh, it's all sports. Now, are you, a, are you still working just by yourself or do you have a, a team now? No, like, I'm branching working out? by myself. Okay. Uh, but it's always, when we do a timing project, it's um, multiple self-employed or, uh, or staff from companies that are doing works. Uh, biggest company like Swiss Timing have, permanent staff, but they hire uh, external uh, contractor like me uh, for the biggest uh, contract. Uh, but it's, it's uh, the way that it, it works because unfortunately there's not enough activities uh, to, uh, for me to let me hire some staff. I would not have enough activity to pay them. And, yeah. uh, but I, I, I can hire some people uh, uh, to on some specific project. For example, uh, last year at the National uh, Athletics uh, Championship, uh, I had to hire two, two other guys that I, I sometimes worked with them. And we became the, time, the official timekeeper of the National Track and Field uh, Championship. Okay, and, cool. Uh, 
So yeah, I have that chance to work in multiple sports. Um, uh, I know a lot of people, uh, companies, and all that stuff. So yeah, it's it's keep me b busy all the year round. So and that was that was the tricky part when I decide to leave the FQSC. I knew that during the summer I was like almost full time in the right. uh, the, the bike races. But what happened in the summer? Uh, in the winter? Yeah. So I you get grow, to sleep. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, sweeping <laughs> dirty. Yeah, I will go sweep the ice. But uh, no, but uh, I, I, is a I had the opportunity to uh, to to work with the Quebec Track and Field Federation during the indoor events and oh, also okay. the Quebec speed skating, short track speed skating. Ooh, yeah. So uh, uh, and uh, also with some contacts, uh, very good. I became the uh, one of the uh, four international uh, timekeepers of the Red Bull Crash Ice, or what they call right now the Red Bull Ice Cross downhill. Did you do the one in Ottawa? Yes, I did. It That's was freaking you. cold. It was I, so cold. You mean you didn't also, like hang out in the Chateau Laurier and do yeah, it from in a the window? Laurier, Just and, <laughs> uh, we had we had a little bit of mist coming from the uh, Ottawa River. That yeah. it make it uh, humid, so it was more cold. So, uh, <laughs> and on on for the uh, the ice cross downhill events, I am uh, the starter. So I am the one who frees my my uh, has uh, on the tower and uh, oh, no, so didn't. over the ice. And uh, <laughs> because all my my other guys works in the timing container, which is heated and with the computers and. Uh, but yeah, you're the kitty, you're the bear, so go outside. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that track. That was pretty impressive. It is. It is. It is. Wow. And it, it, it gave me the opportunity to also travel during the winter in uh, other places. That was really, really nice. And uh, uh, I've been to Tokyo uh, two years ago and last year also. Hey, uh, if, if, so hey, Sylvain, if I was your wife, I'd be like, no. I'm traveling like once a year with you. Where is it going to be? <laughs> yeah, I know she, but you know, I, I also have the privilege and uh, I'm yeah. lucky. I have three kids. You got uh, three kids now? Yes. And, and I will say, let's say a four, <laughs> which we have the, the dog. We have a St. Oh. Bernard. Oh my God. Yeah. Bernard. So, <laughs> so. It's that, like three kids on one. Yeah, it's uh, three, four, and eight. So it's uh, also in the young age that uh, they need uh, constantly uh, people to uh, <laughs> to surround them. So since March, I'm I'm a full time dad right now, uh, doing oh, a little bit of that's time, nice. a little bit. Uh, so yeah, it gives me very nice opportunity to uh, spend more time with them because, mm -hmm. of course, when I travel, uh, I, I'm not home, so it's a little yeah. bit hard, but. Also, one part of the deal when I decided to go in this job, first, my, when I met my wife, uh, she knew that I was doing that. But also to continue and make it grow and everything, we, I have very good relations with the mother-in-law, which it helped. <laughs> so she came often to help my wife when, yeah. I, when I'm traveling. And mm -hmm. most of the time when I'm traveling, it's just it's one week and I, I am back. It's right. more. It's only for the uh, big games like the Olympics or the Pan, uh, Pan Ams or these major right. games that okay, I'm I'm away for uh, for a month uh, or two months. But wow. uh, yeah, that's a that's a crazy story. For example, in 2018 with Pyeongchang Olympic game, I my my last daughter born on uh, January the 17th. On uh -huh. January the 18th, I was at the national speed skating uh, events. It was in Sherbrooke, so I did all travel during the morning and the night to come uh -huh. back at, at the hospital to, to be a little bit with my wife. And then on February the 3rd, I've been to Pyeongchang. And Whoa. up to the uh, February 28th, I came back for one week and I traveled back to Pyeongchang for the Paralympic Games. <laughs> when and when I was in Pyeongchang, uh, I had an email from the UCI that said, oh, you need your yellow fever vaccine to go to the, your next event. But I, I had one day only in between the Paralympic Games coming to Montreal and flying to Rio uh, in Brazil to go for the next event. So I, I had my shots of yellow fever in Korea. We found a way to, uh, to get it <laughs> because uh, 
I found a way to get it in Montreal, but I was not going to be protected during the time I traveled. So, yeah. uh, so I so I had only one day in between the uh, the Paralympics and Rio para, Paralympic track events. When I came back from Rio, and now we are in late March, I had a convention with uh, the uh, the photo finish uh, company I work with in Disney World. But that time I was bright. I invite my, uh, my, my wife and the, the kids uh, in Disney. So the time I was in meeting, uh, they went in the park. Yeah. Oh, very smart guy. Very I smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will have the rope around my neck if not. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Disney World, what? <laughs> no, that, oh that my was gosh. The craziest one. That was the craziest one. And, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm very, very, uh, happy to have her and she understand my, uh, my works and my world. I'm sure she's like, at some point in time, we'll go and travel with you and, you know, spend an extra two Hopefully. weeks afterwards. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Sylvain, I had no idea. Um, and just goes to show you, you know, like you just know one person from one facet of cycling, but you just impact so much. And with that, like, we're going to bring it to an end. Um, so your company is Richard Sports Services or Sports Services? Yeah, Richard Sports Services. Okay. And uh, it's funny because we're in Quebec. I should yeah. have a French name, but yeah. spa, spa and service, it's also French and, uh, and English, the uh -huh. same thing. So, You're lucky. Uh, but, but I put also <laughs> S to the end. So uh, it, it was really funny when I tried to register my, uh, my, my company name and uh, the guy at the government did not want to uh, register it as a first name. So I had to put Les Services de Sport Richard, which I never oh. use uh, because oh. I can say Richard Sport Service or Richard Sport Services, both in French and English. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I know, eh? Like we had the same deal with our club. I'm just like, yeah. yeah, okay, anyways, I'll just put a translated version and we'll run with whatever. Exactly, <laughs> but, exactly. All right, so I have um, those links I'm going to put in um, the descriptions. And also I have some other links that I'm going to share with you guys um, that gives a little bit more, I don't know if there's any more background to, uh, to Sylvain than that we've already heard, but he had some articles here, so I'm going to add them. And um, I don't know, like, I think that if you really listen closely to Sylvain, he's had some pretty good um, tips moving forward. So I love plant the seeds, get your experience, find the people that you need to know that are going to help you get to where you want to be and right he wanted to go to the olympics but it wasn't going to be potentially as an athlete so how do you get there um and he went and he got all this experience to get him to where he is today and i think that you know like if anything like this this interview was a huge learning experience and i think more people should think about those things that should be started early right if you have a dream you want to do something start doing the little steps that are going to get you there i mean you can start later but why if you already know where you're going right um so with that sylvain i've absolutely loved this interview i love getting to know you more um, so next time I see you on, uh, probably in a para event, cause you might see me there, um, mm -hmm. with, I have a couple athletes, um, and I'm working with cycling Canada and the OCA. So you might see, see that tandem bike back there. Oh, oh, oh. I might yeah. have to be a pilot for one of the races. Good. <laughs> yeah. It's right. a nice experience. I, I had that experience to, to, to pilot, a. A oh really? It's, it's but the the one the bike I had was so soft. So at, as soon as we start to push the pedal, we can feel the the frame to torque so much, and uh, it it was really special experience. Oh, I bet it was special getting on there for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> um. So with that, thank you so much again. It's been a huge pleasure, 
And everybody remember to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on these great interviews that are going to be coming up one after the other. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays are my coaching tips on Fridays. And make sure you put on the notification and please go to Apple Podcasts and leave an interview, um, a little review. That would be greatly appreciated. I really want to put, push this uh, podcast to the top, um, you know, with regards to cycling.